We're lucky to have Nona Peltzia here with us for Business News. How are you? I'm very well, thank you very much for having me. And how is ANZ? Because they're saying that what they're out there lending is, 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 is what not keeping up with their deposits. So that's probably a good thing, isn't it? Well, yeah, it means that their profits are quite high and uh, their risks are lower because of course, you know, things are working out that way and they produced quite a healthy result. So their first half result was what is the number? Yeah, up 11% to $964 million. It's quite a, quite a good profit. That's a net profit. That's a net profit. And that's uh, for the year to end of March. And their revenue was up, uh, what, 3% to $2.1 billion, which is also quite a good result. Yeah. Not too bad. Um, we've all been following pretty closely these things over across the ditch. There's a Royal Commission on there. I think what we've had at least two very high profile resignations or sackings. At three. What, three. Three with the AMP and then of course the Commonwealth Bank. There was uh, some disgrace there as well for them charging fees to clients who were dead. Yeah. And, and the whole revelation is, and, and, and admitted straight out in, in the, oh it's not a court is it, it's a Royal Commission, it's a hearing. But they're saying that um, c consumers were not put first and obviously shareholders came first and also um, they were put in front of the law as well. I mean, yeah. what, are there any rumblings here? What's the reaction well, there here are on the some, There have been some rumblings here. Uh, but, you know, th the thing is we have covered this story for a while now. The bank regulators, the market regulators have all said that they, you know, there's been nothing that they can report. We've spoken to banking industry people. They've said there's nothing emerging here. And when I spoke with the chief executive of the ANZ New Zealand Bank today, he affirmed that. He said, look, we haven't had anything but like a few complaints here and there, but nothing to do with the kinds of things that have emerged at the uh, Royal Commission in Australia into the banking sector. Um, yeah, so I think that this is a story that's going to unfold for many months to come. But for now, the ANZ New Zealand Bank is saying that they are operating above board in line with New Zealand's regulations. And there is nothing like that in their books that they need to be ashamed of, that's for sure. Okay, good. That's good news. I think there's more good news with building consents going up. That's the highest level in 14 years. So yeah. well, where's, uh, where's the growth coming from? Attached property, so not houses. And it's interesting. Of course, building consents are not actual buildings. They're just intentions to build, right? Sure. And, and yeah. we're going to see a lot, <laughs> what, a lot of them in the years to come. <laughs> yes, we're going to see. Uh, unfortunately, the, so the, almost all of the change in fact has been uh, for consents for attached dwellings which are basically apartment buildings, townhouses and those types of properties that are not standalone houses. The growth in standalone, standalone houses is pretty much um, unchanged it, over the period before but in since June 20, uh, 2004 we are now at the highest seasonally adjusted rate of new consents for dwellings, almost all of that is as a result of those attached drawings and three of the big properties that are being developed are here in Auckland. In Wellington though, there was a 76% increase again attached dwellings. Wow. So really fascinating. So I think that that reflects what we have seen in other, uh, you know, other surveys that we've seen uh, that people are starting to look at apartments as a place that they are willing to live in. Uh, the Real Estate Institute's uh, last month's figures noted that there had been a drop in the average price of Auckland properties, and that's mostly because people were buying the more less expensive apartments, which also, if they're new, attract a lower LVR, so you can get into them at a, at a lower down payment, 10%. Obviously makes them more attractive, but, yeah. um, but it's still interesting, isn't it? Because you wouldn't have thought that so quickly we would change our minds about living in apartments rather than houses. We're still very much in a house economy. I don't know, so. I live in an apartment. Oh, well, I don't own work. a car, I just rent, you know. <laughs> You're doing your bit. <laughs> I'm doing my bit to keep it that way. <laughs> Tell us about the markets, how they're going. Ah. Well, what do we have here? The top 50 index, it actually fell eight points to 8,436, which is in contrast to what was happening in Australia, where their shares are doing quite well, up a half a percent, uh, the ASX 200 over there. And that's because the Americans have kind of made a trade uh, deal with tariffs and so on, and uh, sort of backed off a bit. So the Asia market looks a little bit better, New Zealand not so much. Uh, but however, eight points down, that's not much. Dollar is steady, 70.4 US, 93.3 Australian, and 51.1 pence. Thanks very much. Nona Peltz here with a business update and the markets update. Thanks as always. Uh